Hi, for this video, what I wanna do is show you how to create a box and whisker plot using Excel. So you're gonna to need to start with some data in order to find the box and whisker plot. So I have 22 data points already typed into Excel. You would just get your data from whatever data you're working with. In order to create the box and whisker plot, you must first select the data that you want to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of those data points. And some of you will be able to just nicely click on this quick analysis tool and go to charts and more charts and then go to all charts. And you will be able to find the box and whisker plot, click okay, and it will automatically create a box and whisker plot for you. It does have a vertical axis that starts at zero and it goes up to 60 counting by tens. If you needed to do this in a horizontal manner, I will show you that on paper here in just a second uh, so that you can see what it would look like if I needed to change it from vertical to horizontal. Okay, but some of you don't have that handy dandy little quick analysis tool, so not to worry. You can still create it by going to insert and come over to your charts in the center and you can't see the box and whisker here, so you would just hit this little down arrow where it says see all charts and you would go to all charts and then you would go to the box and whisker. Okay, um, if you have context to your data, so let's say for example, that this was salaries of a company in thousands of dollars, then I would type in here um, salaries in thousands of dollars so that anybody looking at it know what the data represent. This is just some random numbers that I put in here, so it doesn't have any context, so I'm not going to change the chart title, but I'm just gonna get rid of it so that it doesn't distract from the graph. Okay, under quick layout, you are able to change the layout. Um, I like layout two, which shows the important points so that you know where to put your value. So this gives you your minimum point. This gives you the point where that tells you where to stop the whisker before we hit the outlier. So 33 is the last data point that falls between my minimum value and my first quartile uh, to where my whisker would stop. So this point down here that is separated by a dot, that is an outlier. And the way to determine if there is an outlier is you would take 1.5 times the IQR where IQR represents the interquartile range. Okay, and to find the IQR, all you would have to do is take your third quartile minus your first quartile, okay? Um, so then to determine outliers, you would see on the lower end, you would take Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. And if you're looking for the upper end, you would do the third quartile plus 1.5 times the IQR. I just wanted to explain how they separated out that point how they knew that this point was an outlier. So that's the rule that we would use to do that. Okay, um, on here, we do have that this would be our minimum value. This would be where we stop our whisker. And that's not a very good color. Let me pick a different color. Okay, this would be our Q1. This is our median or Q2. This is our Q3 and our maximum. So if you need the five number summary, the five number summary is the minimum Q1, the median Q3 and your maximum value. Okay, um, just so that you know that this value right in here this is the average or the mean of the data set. So you can see that the mean is slightly lower than the median, which means that it was influenced by this outlier down here. Anytime there's an outlier in the data set, it is going to be influenced by any, or 
sorry, the outlier is going to influence the mean or the average. Okay, so if you needed to take this and instead of creating a vertical, you wanted to make a horizontal or be able to find the horizontal one that matches, you would just change this to where you have a horizontal scale. Um, since my lowest value is 15, I'm just going to count by tens like they did. And my maximum value was 52, so I just need to make sure that my scale goes above the maximum. Okay, I'm just going to kind of find the center point for each of those. And that tells me where um, the five and below. And if it helps, you can just do little tick marks to help you keep track of where your values would be. Okay, so from the data set that we had, On the data set that we had, our important points were that I had a minimum of 15. My first quartile was 38. My second quartile was 42.5. Third quartile was 47.25. And the max was 52. It's possible that the textbook that you work with does not separate out the outliers. So you would just go and put a dot at the minimum. And so I'm going to first show how to do it without separating out the outliers because the textbook that I teach from, they tend to not separate out the outliers. So I just want my students to see what that looks like. And then I will separate out the outlier because I feel like it's important. Okay, so then I would go to where 38 is. And I would put a line, that's where my whisker is going to go. And then I would go to 42.5. And that's going to be where my Q2 is. So my Q1 was here. Q3 is at 47.25. So it's going to be a little bit past the 47. And then my maximum is at 52. So I would just draw a whis whisker. So if your textbook does not separate out your outliers, that's how it would look. Okay, if it does, remember that we would stop at the last value that falls above the outlier or any outliers. So we would stop our whisker at 33. So instead we would put a little icon or asterisk to represent that 15 is an outlier. And then at 33 is where we would stop our whisker. Okay, and if you want, you can just put a dot. I tend to just put a dot there instead of drawing a line. I know Excel um, drew a line, but it's kind of your choice as to what you want to do. So at 33, I would just stop my whisker, and then everything else would look the same. I would just draw my values, but that way, in case you have a homework platform that does give all of the answers in a horizontal uh, box and whisker plot, you can take all of your values that were given to you in Excel in the vertical plot and change it into a horizontal plot. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.